sort and order very useful. If you have a vector and you want to put the vector in a in an order in a sorted order, it's it's easy. All you have to do is sort it. Sort rearranges a vector according to the values of the elements. Sort rearranges a vector according to the values of the elements. Order on the other hand returns the indexes of the vector according to the sort of the values. Order returns the indexes, not the, uh, not the values themselves. Why do we care about that? Well, sorting a vector, again, as I mentioned, very simple. You just need sort. But if you want to sort a data frame, or if you want to sort any sort of multi-dimensional structure, more than one column, order is your friend. Because order will return the indexes in the correct sort, which you can then apply to all of the other elements, all of the other vectors in that structure. What do I mean? Well, let's just get a quick look at it here. So. Here, let's say we're, we want to check out the relationship between temperatures and ozone. And we're, we're completely oblivious to regression and things like that. We just want to look at the value. So we have, these two, we have these two vectors, observations, where we've made corresponding measurements of temperatures and ozone at the same time. Okay, so here's our temps measurements, 67, and this is Fahrenheit, 67, 72, 74, 67. So we return that. There's our vector, right? And then the ozone, when the temperature was 67, the ozone is 41. Temperature was 72, the ozone is 36. So we load that up into ozone. And now we want to sort the pairs in, in order of one or the other. How do we do that? We can't use sort because sort will sort each one according to its own value. We can use order to do that. What do I mean? Well, so here's, here's ozone, right? Ozone is 41, 36, 12, 18. If we order our ozone and we put the result in this variable lowercase o, lowercase o, and then we express it, we get, we get this. This is the return from order. What does that mean? We'll go back to the original ozone. This is the subscript. It's returning the subscript with the lowest value. In the original ozone vector, that one is the lowest value. It has a subscript 3. In the original vector, that one is the second lowest value. It has the index 4. The original vector, that, this one, is the third lowest, 2. So these are the indexes of this according to the values sorted. Okay, we can, if we apply that to ozone, let's do that. I'm sorry, if we sort ozone, if we just sort ozone, so now we're sorting it by the value, and we could take a quick peek at ozone. It'd just be 12, 18, 36, 41. And then if we take, if we apply the ordering of the ozone subscripts to temps, what that will do is it will rearrange the values of temps so they're in the correct order according to the ozone vector, not the temp vector. So the lowest ozone vector, the ozone value element, was when the temperature was 74. And the second lowest ozone value is when the temperature was 62. Okay, so it, it's kind of subtle, a subtle distinction, but um, very useful, as we'll see in simulation, any sort of selection, any sort of data manipulation. Okay, so we'll, we'll come back to that. Now, what else? Okay, so let's move on to matrices. Okay, vector is your simplest, your default structure. A matrix is the next. And a matrix, a matrix is a two-dimensional array. And in the strictest case, 
a matrix in R is all numeric. Now there are exceptions. You can't ha you can't have character matrices. So don't go off saying Jeff Jeff you know Jeff you're, you you said it has to be numeric. It doesn't. I know, and it's true. But generally, when you read the literature, it will tell you a matrix is numeric. Why does it say that if it's not true? Well, here here is where it comes from. Uh, matrix, the, the structure of a matrix, it's not really there so that we have a two-dimensional structure. It's there because there are many critical statistical numerical functions that perform, that work on ma matrix algebra and matrix mathematics. In fact, all of your, multi, you know, your multiple regression, anytime you have any sort of multivariate uh, estimation of a parameter, uh, let's say you're regressing values of y on three on three predictor variables on observed values of three predictor variables x1 x2 and x3 and you're just performing a regression you're regressing y onto x1 x2 and x3 well what really gets performed the math that gets performed is matrix math because it's expressing that each observation x1 is a column x2 is a column, x3 is a column, y is a column, and it's performing matrix inversions and matrix calculations. So that's where the matrix comes from for R, and that's why it's usually described as numeric. Now, okay, so what is a matrix? How do you create a matrix? Well, let's look at the matrix help screen. If we say help matrix, question mark matrix, we get this. We get the help screen. Note you can create a matrix very quickly. All you have to do is uh, the first three arguments which are required, the, where the data comes from, the number of rows, number of columns. It always populates it by, by column. By row is false by default. And it, it, the, it has to have names. It has to have dimension names. The default is null, in which case it will give it subscripts instead. You can name columns and rows, as we'll see. But so, okay, so you need to have at least three arguments. And so we do. We say we want the values to be zero. We want it to be a four by four. So it does. It creates a four by four. The the dimension names, we didn't give it names, so it gives it default subscripts. And note the subscripts now have commas because we're talking about row, column, row, column. You can still locate any one element based on its row position, 3, and its column position, in this case, 3. So let's go a little further. If you want to have... Um, so here we, here we have a set, one to 16, and we say make it a 4 by 4. And note, by default, it populates column-wise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. The number must correspond, must be a perfect multiple. It's not going to re repeat. If I said, let me make sure I know what I'm talking about. If I said 1 to 14, I want a 4 by 4. It's, it's not going to let you do this. <laughs> well, it gives you a warning. I was close. It, didn't, it wasn't fatal, but it did give you a warning. Um, R, and this is the mode. This is the MO for R. When you run out, when you have a short number, it repeats. It recycles is the term, and it does, but it gives you a warning. Uh, you, it's not good form to do that, of course. You want to know for sure what you're populating. So here we have 16 4 by 4 um, note with a matrix, you, if you query the structure, str queries the structure, all it says is it's integer, it's got four rows, four columns, and here are the values. Okay, but you can also query the individual elements of the structure, which are n row, number of rows are four, number of columns of, of x are, are 4. The dimensions of x, which is an attribute of a matrix object, 4 by 4. Okay, so here let's do this again. So here we create our matrix one more time. And 
now we're going to create it, but we're going to say by row equals true. Note what happens when it populates the matrix. It does it um, row, row by row. So now we, instead of 1, one 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, now it goes across 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, and so forth. Um, you can also subscript. You can address any one. So if we say A2, this would be the second row. It returns the second row. A comma 4, this returns the fourth column. If we say A2 comma 4, that's the second row, fourth column. Or you can subset parts of it. You can say show me rows 3 and 4, but only the third and fourth columns. Now, you can use a negative. Negative will just leave out whatever the value is, in this case, the third row. Okay, you can, you can name it. Row, you can, there are two functions. Uh, matrices do have named columns and rows, but by default, they, they default to the subscripts, to the indexes, if you don't give it a value. But you can use the row names and the column names to assign values to the rows and columns of any matrix structure. So now we've named the columns FR, sophomore, junior, senior, and the rows A, B, C, D. And so now we can use those values as subscripts because this, again, this is what this is returning is a true or a false. It, it matches the column header with that, and if it doesn't match, it's false, which is a zero. If it does match, it's true, which is a one. And so it will return the ones that are true. Okay, so you can do matrix algebra, matrix math. So here's our A matrix again. We have a B matrix. You can use the multiply operator to multiply the two A's together, 1, 4, 9, 6. Um, in this case, because A is sequential, 1 through 16, if we do that, if we say A times A, you get the same results as if you say A, A when you say A squared, you're not, you're not squaring the matrix, you're squaring the elements. A raised to the second power. The caret is the exponentiation operator. And A caret 2 means A squared, but it doesn't mean the matrix. It means each, each, uh, each individual element. A percentage, um, oops, I messed up. Percentage, asterisk percentage, this means squared. This is matrix multiplication. Okay, so do that. And then it then it is squaring it. Squaring the two matrices.